Hello and welcome to Imperion Galactic Survival. My name is Spange and in today's episode I'm going to show you how to build a basic capital vessel in the game. First of all, what you're going to want to do is go to start game, single player and go creative. Okay, we're going to then select in the starting location up here, space location, temperate orbit, that'll do. No other changes required unless you want to change the name of the game and then just click start. Okay, once you're in the game, you'll be greeted by this lovely gentleman here. I suggest you hit the G key on your keyboard, put yourself into God mode, wave him goodbye, and then simply press space. And that'll take you out of the building. You're then free to look around, fly around. You can use Shift WASD in order to move around a little bit quicker. This is a creative session, so you are indestructible. None of the normal survival rules apply. You have infinite resources and access to what I call the H menu, which is H on your keyboard and gives you access to everything, so which we were going to need in order to build our first capital vessel. So put yourself in a nice position somewhere, you know, plenty of light. I'm going to go right here, hit that H key, and what we're going to need to do is pull in a bunch of stuff that we're going to need in order to build our capital vessel, okay? So let's go ahead and grab a capital vessel starter block. Now, if you left click on that, you'll grab a full thousand of those, but if you right click on that, it will just give you the one. We only need the one, so let's just do a right click and we'll pull the one in there. We can also, from here, pull in all the other stuff. Now, there's a lot of things here that are, that are not related to capital vessels or that you need at all right now, okay? So the H menu can be quite overwhelming if you're new to the game. And uh, this all probably looks like gobbledygook for you. So along the top, we've got a bunch of tabs. Devices is the one uh, that you're going to want, first of all. So go ahead and click Devices. And then the tab row above it, we can then filter further down by pressing on the capital vessels filter and that removes loads of stuff and actually this is just the stuff that we're going to need and from this i'm going to tell you all right i'm going to tell you what we're going to need from this what i like to start with is the biggest components okay so look for a warp drive first and again you only need one of these so grab a warp drive uh grab a pentaxa tank you're going to need that in order to fuel said warp drive and the other biggest components are things like polarized shields. So we're going to grab one of those as well. We're not necessarily going to keep that in the ship, depending on what kind of ship we're going to build. But we're going to grab one and definitely make a space for one. Definitely useful. The other sort of stuff that you're going to need is fuel tanks. So grab a bunch of those. So just a left click. O2 tanks. We're going to need some ammo boxes. Although, actually, all I'm going to do instead of getting the V ammo box is I'm going to get an ammunition container controller and a bunch of container extensions. And I'll explain those a bit later. Uh, we're going to need some medium thrusters. We're going to need some T1 generators. We are going to need uh, some RCS, although probably not very many. Let's grab some small thrusters as well. And large constructors, food processors, bridges, Wi-Fi, small constructors, medical devices, armor locker, <laughs> detector, lights, <laughs> keep it up, doors, hangar doors. Uh, this is where we start to get a bit optional, to be honest. You know, doors, doors. you need definitely on your way into the ship. Whether you do that through a door, hangar door, shutter door is entirely up to you. You also have blast doors. Uh, and we're going to need cockpit as well and passenger seats, gravity generator. And I think that's probably most of the stuff. We might add some more later. Oh, O2 station. Yeah, we're going to need one of those uh, things like... Um, repair stations we might add teleporters we might add it really depends on what kind of tier of ship you're going for so i'm going to try and stick to around about tier two so i'm going to grab myself a tier two cpu extender if we were going for tier three then we'd need three or four what the hell am i talking about cpu you may ask well we'll, we'll come across that in a moment first of all let's close down the h menu go to one on your hotbar and you can see that this is our capital vessel starter block just go ahead click left click that place it down you'll notice a nicely convenient place arrow telling you which way is forward 
um, try and remember that so putting yourself in space where you've got a nice clear landmarks is a good idea so if I now delete that block I know forward is actually towards the MS Titan over there so it's all good um, what we need now that we've placed our starter blocks go back into the H menu one more time this time click on the building blocks and then steel blocks we're probably going to want maybe some carbon composite blocks later on and maybe some windows and stuff later but that doesn't matter for now um, so we've got our sort of starter here we're ready to start now I don't like these blocks here at the moment so I'm going to hold shift um, with my other block selected of course hold shift and right click and that's going to get rid of these blocks I'm just going to right click away each of these so that we are left with just a core Another tool is to look directly at the core now, press the N key and you'll get this building options come up on the right, go to uh, symmetry plane and then I like to use Y, Z and then just go ahead and click on the core itself and if you click to the left of the core the, the plane moves, you click to the right, moves to the right as well. Uh, but we're going to keep it center for now. That's our symmetry plane so if we place a block it places it on the other side for us. Very handy, very very handy. Okay so now that we've got a core, what I'm going to do is going to build out a basic sort of rough frame of a ship, really. It's not going to be a very big ship, because like I said before, we're going to keep it to tier 2 CPU. There's that word again. What on earth does that mean? CPU statistics is in the P menu. Get into here, you just look at the core, or any other blocks that are connected to it. Press P on the keyboard, and you'll get something like this come up. Go to the CPU statistics. And we'll see that we have four tiers of CPU. This is how the game controls kind of how big your ships get, how many devices they have and stuff. Every block, everything counts towards CPU. We can see that we have a CPU score of 234 at the moment just by placing uh, 19 steel blocks and the core unit itself. And they will gradually uh, on very quickly add up to 200,000 but we're going to aim for 500,000. It's going to give us a little bit of breathing room in order to get more stuff into this ship. Okay, so let's crack on. I created a bit of a crucifix. That's fine. <laughs> um, just sort of build out a little bit of a frame. It doesn't really matter at this point. Um, you can go as pretty much as big or as small as you want. I would... Uh, I would sort of suggest maybe just start off small and work your way up from there. Now, you remember I said let's bring in the, the big components first. Uh, so this is definitely one of them. This is the warp drive. And this is a bit of a monster. So I'm going to slap this down first because this is going to dictate, um, you know, very easily dictate the sort of size of the ship to us, really. We're not going to be able to go much smaller than that block um any smaller than that block really we also have a pentaxid tank now i'm probably going to move this a bit later on but for now let's see if we can put it um just there i know it looks a bit weird but bear with me um so block rotation you can see the little green line it represents the uh, rotation you can then rotate around the axis. You can then change that axis and then rotate it different ways. So when you're working with different shapes by right clicking on the block here, you, get, you can rotate the axis. Uh, check out the sort of game options controls for that. I've remapped mine. So to me telling you what I've mapped them to doesn't help. I, and I can't really remember what they were before they were mapped because it's been so long. But you can remap them is the point. <laughs> Basically, basic little ship like this, um, what I'm going to do is mostly just engines, a little bit of interior, and somewhere to park uh, a smaller ship. Okay, so we're going to have uh, in the middle here some sort of little construction area. Uh, let's build some rooms. Uh, this helps us shape the ship a little bit better. Now, I'm going to build a room here around the constructor. Where is it? The large constructor, this one here. Okay, so I'm going to put one of these. And for this activity, I may decide to turn off symmetry, but I'm going to leave it on actually. So, well, I might take one out later. So we've got a bit of a room going here. Don't worry about this thing looking like a complete and utter brick. 
for the time being. It will look like a complete and utter brick for a while. We'll come to shaping stuff later. What I want in here is production and things like fuel engineering and stuff. This is going to be a very early game ship. So also don't worry about clustering things together. Although the advice later on is to spread them out at this point. Just get them in is enough. We're going to put an O2 tank, two O2 tanks and four fuel tanks should be enough for our little ship. We can possibly add some more later, but four fuel tanks, two O2 tanks will definitely get us going to start off with. So we're starting to get a little bit more interior now. So we're going to put a wall between what is the forward section over there and the back section with engineering and stuff here. I'm going to put a little bit of a wall between and that would be a great place for us to put, put a, uh, a door. OK, so we've separated off the sort of engineering area. We now have a forward section here. What I might make this area is two floors so that we've got one floor and then it splits off onto a, a top floor here. And I want this sort of top floor here uh, really to be where we're going to park our ship later on. And uh, what we can do is we can actually lower this down even further. So let's bring a line of blocks back. Take this floor out. Because what I'm going to do with this space here and this is another thing that I forgot to bring in earlier. So I apologize. Grow plots. Grow plots are going to help you grow um, plants, obviously, and uh, it, very useful for an early game ship to have so that you can actually grow food and not starve to death. Standard plot uh, you'll find on most ships is 3x3. Three three. That is big enough to take full advantage of a single grow light. You can grow light directly above the middle plot, and that one grow light will service those nine plots. Again, we can build a wall around that. That's fine. We got a little garden. We might want to build that out a little bit. Kind of visual sake, we may want to be able to walk around that. Now, this is where um, also I want to sort of split off uh, the ship between the two floors. So let's bring in some stair blocks. We're going to have the two by one stairs. Flip them round. I'm going to have another one or another two up there. And one more in order to bring us up to the next level. Bear in mind these stairs are only going up one block, so we do need to add two lots into them in order to make it go up the full height that we want it to. Uh, so up here, we kind of want um, more sort of living quarters and stuff. All of our production systems are downstairs. Food and stuff like that will live down here. Upstairs will be living plus SV dock. So we want our bridge to be, kind of be between the two. And this is where we'll pilot the ship from. So we can grab our cockpit here. And we can place that maybe in an elevated position. Right there. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> We're definitely going to sort of move and round, uh, move and shape this as, as and when necessary, really. Just going to pop in another stair block up to our landing platform on the top there. And, uh, and we've pretty much got the skeleton of our ship. I know it doesn't look like very much now, but we're going to try and make it look like something very, very soon. Now, one other thing that I am missing, I haven't added in yet, is the shield generator. Now, this isn't something that you're necessarily going to have straight off the bat. So I'm going to, to pop it onto the back of the warp core here. Um, but it may very well be that I'll take it off at the end of the build and just leave the space for it. And this means that we'll be able to upgrade the ship when we're using it in survival mode. So for now, let's just pop that on the back there, build out a few extra blocks to in order to sort of build, again, build a kind of room around it sort of thing. Uh, and then we'll sort of figure out a backside for that later. What I might also do as well is another thing we can do is front entrances. So we've got a central step in the middle flanked by two steps either side. 
thinking about how we're going to get into the ship when it's on the ground is a good thing to do what we can do is add some steps down like that and then at the bottom here we can grab some boarding ramps these are these ones here it's quite good and the boarding ramps will allow us to pick ourselves up off the ground once the ship is landed assuming that the ship will land well we're going to have to try and make sure that the ship will land with that flush to the ground so we'll have to try and work that into our build as well but uh, definitely worth thinking about how you're going to get in and out of the ship early on um so yeah okay we've got we definitely got some good skeleton going on here now we need to add some thrusters to it and then some shape now with thrusters they need to be spread out spread them out as much as you can and you'll get the best performance out of them now obviously the shape of your ship is going to greatly influence where you put these thrusters uh, but <laughs> keep in mind that the more you do spread these out uh, the better performance you will get so do what you can try not to compromise your build shape too much so I'm going to add two um, at the front and two at the back for our sideways. Now this is going to give us an excellent turn rate because uh, we've got on both sides two thrusters in every corner. That's going to give us great turn velocity. And that's the kind of principle I'm going to follow with the rest here. I'm going to put in two uh, upwards, downwards. Let's move them back a bit. And of course, forwards and backwards. Now, um, if you can manage it, have equal thrust in all directions will mean you have equal performance in any direction of the ship. Uh, having thrusters in all directions is excellent for obviously space travel but if you're planning on landing on planets and taking a lot of cargo then you might want to consider more thrusters on the bottom here just to increase the amount your ship can lift now as you can see already from our cpu stats we've gone well over our 500,000 limit that we set for ourselves uh, this is largely probably down to the shield that we've added on the back there now remember i did say that we weren't necessarily going to include that we were just putting it there so that we have a space for it so let me put a block on the end of the shield there take that off and uh we can still see that we're somewhat over and that might be down to the large constructors are also taking up considerable amount down do you remember i said we'd probably only want one of these so let's take symmetry mode off and take out one of those constructors now we've got 7,000 CPU left, or thereabouts. First of all, what I'm going to do is pop down my uh, tier 2 extension there. That's going to give me an idea now of how much sort of speed and thrust I've got. Because now my CPU is 100% efficient. The statistics will update with the full thruster properties of everything. So we can see instantly that we have... Um, a lot of power here too much i would say top speed of a cv in space is 100 meters a second our forward thrust gives us 100 meters a second instant speed this is good news because it means that we can actually take thrusters off or reduce them to the small type thrusters and that will actually give us a lot of cpu back but as we add more blocks and more stuff to the ship its weight will increase and its performance will decrease. So what I suggest you do is keep the mediums on while you're fleshing out the hull of the ship. And then once you've done everything, you can take the mediums off and replace them with smalls if you've still got the performance available. If not, you may need to consider upgrading to a tier three, but we're gonna press on and try and get our ship into the tier two range. First of all, we're gonna need to flesh this out a little bit more. Now, this is entirely subjective and entirely up to your own sort of build skills and confidence with the blocks and stuff. So I'm not going to tell you how to build a ship. 
what I have done so far is shown you how to make a kind of skeleton. The layout is entirely up to you. I've gone for a two deck kind of split bridge approach. You can go for an all on one level or split it even across more decks or make it wide. It's entirely up to you. All I would say is try and make sure that your thrusters are as far apart from little clusters as possible to get the most performance out of them. Putting them all, if I put all these forward thrusters in the same place as these back ones, for example, I would have very bad turn, uh, very bad yaw and pitch rates. But because they're spread out, they're going to give me great performance. Anyway, let's see if we can flesh this thing out and actually put a hull around it, shall we? Once you've built up your outer hole a bit like this, now I'm not finished here, there's still lots to do, but the, the outer hole is done. I've done some shaping as well. So I am really comfortable now with how much space I have inside the ship. Obviously we created our skeleton earlier, a foundation for internal space to make sure that we could definitely fit the biggest uh, stuff in there. There are a few things though, haven't shown you yet, but now that we've got the outer hull in place, we can put those things in and we can complete our ship. So let me take you on a little tour on the inside. Now, added all those things in earlier. Do you remember the four medical devices? Uh, sorry, five medical devices I was talking about. So with your medical device block, bring that up, right click, and you've got five pieces there. If you can get all five pieces in to the ship, then you've, you're covered for any medical ailments that you may encounter during the game. So as you can see here, uh, in the deck that 
we earlier nominated for kind of living stuff, quarters and whatnot, I've put in the five medical devices. I've also put in a shower, which is useful for reducing radiation and heat. On the other side, we've got O2 station, armor locker, bed, which is useful for single player skipping the night, and a toilet, which is useful for getting rid of indigestion and, you know, taking a break. <laughs> If we head down, actually, before we do that, I have put a detector in there. Detector is you know, useful for finding stuff. Definitely put a detector in. Down into the bridge area here, we've got obviously our pilot seat up front. Nice window area so we've got plenty of sort of visual out the front. If we're flying in first person, that's going to be handy. That's also a nice downward view as well for landing and stuff. Passenger seats for any friends I might have on the ride with me. Now, I put in some ammo boxes. I put in the basic ones because obviously I'm trying to keep things down around about tier two. We're obviously 85,000 points over at the moment. And I'm going to go through that in a minute with you to try and get that just under 500,000. So uh, ahead of that, I've put in the basic ammo box rather than going for the container controller container extension route, which costs a lot more CPU. And well, as we're only carrying cannon and minigun rounds at this point, these two ammo boxes will more than suffice for now. Uh, for future upgrades, I've put in truss blocks here to show that this whole area can be converted into uh, container extensions once this ship can be upgraded to tier three. So I might, uh, we might replace that with just normal walls and maybe leave an LCD on, I'm not sure. Uh, but it's good to put trust there just to sort of mark it out for now as upgradable space. We head on down, um, this whole area I've moved around. The garden is off to one side. As you can see, I have furnished that with a couple of fridges and a food processor. Also kitchen counter for decorative reasons. A little bit of shaping and um, put a ventilator in. Didn't mention ventilators before. We put in O2 tanks, but in order to pressurize the ship and make sure that there is oxygen flowing, you will need a ventilator block in uh, in each room. And I've got another video about how to, how to pressurize rooms and, and stuff like that. So do check that out if you're still struggling with uh, oxygen oxygen pressurized rooms and stuff but basic rule of thumb you need a ventilator in almost every room um we've got our production so large constructor small constructor storage bin at maximum 320,000 capacity that is all of these funny little silvery blocks that you can see dotted around these are all container extensions they are in the floors and the ceiling considering they have as many hit points as a steel block they're very useful if you if you're short on space replace your floors and ceilings with them and then you will quickly get to the maximum volume of 320,000. very very easy a uh, couple of extra storage bins there behind this is our gravity generator nice little access hatch through this door we have our engineering section i've obviously placed some generators down in order to gain power these are quite big i should have put them in earlier if i'm honest i've put them in later sorry about that if i confused anyone with that one but you definitely need generators in in order to obviously power the vessel up. Um, I put them in later just because I, I wanted to see what space we had available for them, whether to bury them in the walls or not. Um, but I didn't explain that earlier. Sorry about that. Our tier two CPU extender is there. Wi-Fi, Pentaxi tank and um, warp tank, uh, warp drive as before. And behind that is the space for the shield generator. Outside, what I've done is just under this decorative piping blocks here, as I put a shutter door that you can access that rear compartment with. Once you have a shield generator and you've upgraded the ship to tier three, you can snap it in there nice and easy. Now, that's pretty much it. That is pretty much it. The whole ship is based on that skeleton that we first built. I know it looks a hell of a lot different and you're probably there going, <laughs> what the hell are you doing, Spange? That ship looks well complete and completely different ship from what we built earlier. And even in some parts, yeah, I mean, yes, it looks completely different. But look, here's our thrusters. Do you remember the little clusters that we made? They're exactly the same. They're here as well. They're exactly the same. The, the warp drive is in the same place. The fuel tanks are in the same place. The O2 tanks are all in the same place. This is the same skeleton. Everything that you see on top of what we had just before the little montage there, 
is just decorative. <laughs> Apart from the turrets here, which are obviously for defense, all the blocks are just outer hull and, and decorative. So don't worry too much um, about it looking like this now. And if you're trying to build it looking like a brick, we've all got to start somewhere. Don't worry about it. This is the same thing. Mine just have more sort of shapey blocks on it. Now we have the wonderful task of trying to get rid of 85,000 CPU points. And what I'm going to do, and the quickest way I think to do that is to get rid of, well, not get rid of, but to nerf the thrusters on this thing. Okay, so uh, the problem is now we have a difficult situation because we're so far uh, over CPU, our thrusters are running at only 75% efficiency. So they're only registering 28 meters a second, which is actually kind of poor. So what we can do temporarily is upgrade ourselves to tier three. Just slap a couple of extenders in here, right? I'll get rid of them later. Uh, now that we're 100% efficient, what our thrusters are capable of. So we can see instantly that for some reason our downward thrust is 73 meters a second squared, which is, which is a lot, which is a lot. We don't need that much down thrust. The lifting thrust, 73, that's quite useful. That is quite useful. So what we're going to do is we're going to take away thrust where we don't need thrust. Okay, so we've got our downward, uh, downward thrusters here. We uh, kind of replace them with smalls. So we're not getting rid of the down thrust. We are simply downgrading it uh, to something a little bit less CPU hungry. The small thrusters, and I'm leaving the space there as well so that we can upgrade to mediums later on if we want to. Okay, let's have a look, see what that's done to our CPU. We're aiming for 500,000. So we've still got 21,000 left to go. Now this is a tier two ship starter ship so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get rid of the large constructor i'm going to let you guys playing put that back in if you want to now we're down to just over at 1000 points so i'm going to get rid of one of these ammo boxes let's get rid of one of these fridges as well and finally these two boxes here leaving us one storage container that gives us all the cpu we need we can get rid of our tier three now. For some reason it's still registering as tier three. It's now tier two. Mr. Ship, can you update, please? <laughs> it's tier two. Trust me. Uh, I've taken the extenders out. Maybe we need to turn it off and on again. Classic IT trick. No. Okay. It's, it's stuck on tier three. Elion, please fix. Anyway, we, we've managed to now get to tier two CPU at 500,000. We're at 497419, which is excellent. We could probably actually add one of those containers back in. Um, I think they, I think, do they? We add that one in there. Yeah, 499339. There we go. Okay. So we we'll leave that one container there. Now, when somebody brings a ship into use, it's ready to go. It's ready to use. They have everything in it they need and it has plenty of upgrade ability to go with it all they will need to do is get themselves some tier 3 extenders however they manage to do that either by taking up pois and building them or buying the uh, bridges from polaris or whatever as a tier 2 ship this should see them through quite nicely for quite a while upgrade themselves to tier 3 upgrade the thrusters the production the ammo boxes uh the cargo and away you go I mean, I've still got some stuff I want to do to this thing. I still want to texture it, paint it. You know, the, the bottom is really flat and boring. I want to do something with that. Um, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is how to build a basic capital vessel. And I, I know, I know, it. you know, it, it looks a little bit more advanced than necessarily basic. Um, if your first capital vessel looks like a box, have no shame. It's absolutely fine. Uh, <laughs> it takes a lot of time and practice. Look, I have 3,000 hours in this game, so, you know. <laughs> it takes a lot of practice and time um to 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 get things to look a little bit better than than perhaps they are at the moment so don't don't sweat it don't worry um as long as it works and it performs and it does what you need it to do uh then it is all good i hope that this video has been useful to you um and i hope that now 
you know how to build a capital vessel or you at least have a better idea of how to build a capital vessel and uh, maybe you can try and build your own instead of using the workshop ones trust me you build your own capital vessel you use it in game it's much more rewarding uh, that feeling of accomplishment and uh, a little bit of pride in there as well of course Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you found this episode useful, informative, and maybe even slightly entertaining. And hopefully, I'll see you next time. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.